Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the May edition of the Lift Off webinar. This is Joe Steele from uh, from Lift. Thank you very much for taking time from your your busy schedule, maybe your lunch hour on the in the Eastern time zone, or your morning um, if you happen to be west of us. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from PDA LLC, a, a long time uh, an engaged uh, Lift member, to talk a little bit more about their involvement in our. Uh, thin wall casting and design optimization uh, process. A uh, few housekeeping items I'd like to tackle right off the top. Uh, please, everyone, put your phones uh, on mute so everyone can hear the uh, the webinar and, and take part in, in what is going on without too much background uh, noise. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, please use the chat function that is a part of the GoToMeeting uh, taskbar uh, uh, for me, it's on the right-hand side of my screen. You can address that uh, question to the organizer, and we can facilitate the Q&A uh, at the end of the session. Uh, and as always, each uh, liftoff webinar will be recorded. Uh, so we are recording this uh, this webinar, and we'll be posted to uh, our website at lift.technology. Um, just look for the liftoff webinar series, and you can go back and watch this one or any of the other uh, previous uh, webinars um, from when we started this last year. Um, you can also register for future webinars there as you all did today. So we look forward to, to your participation today. And, uh, and yeah, please take a look at uh, those that we've done in the future or in the past, and we look forward to doing many more in the future. A little bit uh, about, uh, about Lyft. Uh, we are uh, lightweight innovations for tomorrow. We are one of 14 Manufacturing USA Institutes. We are a Department of Defense sponsored Manufacturing USA Institute. Uh, Manufacturing USA is a group of innovation institutes that uh, uh, began in 2013, 20, 2012, 2013, with the first one being America Makes down in Youngstown, Youngstown Ohio. They focused on additive uh, manufacturing. Each of the institutes have a, have a specific technology that they focus on. Ours happens to be lightweight metals and our mission is to accelerate the development and application of innovation innovative lightweight metal production to support um, manufacturing uh, in both the u.s commercial and defense markets uh, we do that really in three ways we focus on technology development technology transition because we want to make sure that those new innovative technologies that we've just developed find their way into the marketplace and also we focus on education workforce development we want to make sure that the pipeline of talent uh, of skilled and, and uh, educated workers in advanced manufacturing are ready and able to take on and work with these new innovations. So uh, we focus on supporting uh, their education as well, all the way from you know middle school students uh, exposing them to uh, to advanced manufacturing as a possible career to you know uh, to supporting veterans when they come back with the um, uh, with some uh, with some skills training. Uh, or upskilling current uh, current workers as well. You can learn more about uh, about Lyft by visiting our website at lyft.technology. You can give us a call, or you can follow us on on Twitter, or LinkedIn, or Facebook at at News from Lyft uh, as well. I would encourage you to uh, to do that. Um, quick little note about about Lyft. I mentioned there are 14 uh, Manufacturing USA institutes. We happen to share a location here in Detroit with uh, with one of them, uh, IACME, the Composites Institute. Uh, together, we unveiled a high bay uh, in our Detroit-based facility last year, um, and we are gearing uh, that up to handle uh, both proprietary projects as well as collaborative uh, collaborative projects going forward. You can see the list of uh, machines and equipment that we have on the lift metalworking side um, and uh, some of the services that we're providing uh, as well. Uh, please give us a call or, or check on the website for ways that you can engage with us to, to come take a tour. If you're in Detroit, I would encourage you to do so. Or if you had questions about any of the equipment or services uh, we are looking to provide, um, please uh, please let us know about that. You can also visit iacme.org to learn a little bit more about uh, the composites world. Um, or if you come visit here, you can you can take tours, uh, hopefully, of, of, of both sides. Uh, the Lift Off webinar series is brought to you uh, not only by Lift, but also uh, the Michigan Manufacturing Technology Center, um, called the Center. They are one of uh, 14 um, uh, manufacturing extension partnerships, uh, part of the National Institutes of Science and Technology, uh, NIST, and their mission is to support small and medium-sized manufacturers um, prosper and, and thrive. They've been around for about 30 years. Um, 
as you can see on the screen, they focus on everything from cybersecurity to Industry 4.0 to accelerating technology um, uh, and everything in between. They deal, we, while we deal in just metals, um, the center deals with uh, help support manufacturers of, of all kinds. Um, they've done some recent uh, surveys in terms of, you know, how impactful their support uh, their support is, um, and and they have shown that uh, for every one hundred dollars that uh, a manufacturing manufacturer invests with them, um, they actually over the course of a year they see one hundred and six dollars in return. So so please uh, check out uh, the center. Um, uh, we've worked with them on a couple of uh, projects. They've been a longtime supporter of of of, of Lyft from the very beginning. We've worked on a on a lightweight frame together um, uh, for for uh, for for vehicles um, that you can see it was recently shown at the uh, Society of Automotive Auto Automotive Automotive Engineers um, and you can see more information about that uh, that project both uh, on our website and and their website. Uh, but that is enough about uh, Lyft and the center. Uh, what I want to do is bring our presenting um, our presenter up to the uh, to the microphone now, Jaten Shah. He is the founder and president of Product Development and Analysis, uh, located over in Naperville, Illinois. He has 30 years of experience in casting design and manufactured related, manufacturing related uh, to new product development, casting conversion, reverse engineering, redesign, failure analysis for various alloys and processes. He specializes in, in casting and rigging design optimization and process simula uh, uh, simulation, ICME, rapid prototyping, digital manufacturing, um, and uh, con contract uh, research and development. Uh, he has been a longtime uh, member of Lyft and is a very active supporter. So with that, I will hand things over to uh, Jiten to talk about our thin wall casting technology. Good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Jiten Shah. Maybe good morning for some of you folks. Uh, today's uh, topic uh, is uh, going to be focused on the light weighting uh, through thin wall casting technologies. And I'm going to cover uh, quite a few of those. Um, so, you know, I'll start off with a brief introduction uh, of uh, PDA, uh, uh, the process, uh, the technology enablers, uh, some of which came out of uh, the contract research. Uh, and present a few case studies and then wrap up with some uh, takeaways. So PDA uh, have been providing, uh, you know, CAE related uh, design and manufacturing support to OEMs and uh, metal casters uh, over 25 years. Uh, we are heavily involved with uh, manufacturing innovation institutes as uh, Joe mentioned. Uh, obviously with lift uh, uh, on thin wall related uh, casting related uh, activities also we are a gold member of america mix uh, which is focused focused on um, additive manufacturing and uh, we have been involved with uh, the 3d printed sand technology related research projects and the third one is dmdii uh, Digital Manufacturing and Design Innovation Institutes, uh, which currently we are working on rapid certification for AM, and we finished a project dealing with casting variability. We call it IM Fix. So we have been uh, quite involved on contract research uh, since uh, you know mid 90s. Uh, had a nice program funded by DARPA. Uh, since then and quite active with uh, professional societies, uh, namely American Foundry Society, uh, ICI, and, and some uh, heavily military-oriented NDIA and AUSA, and on the composite side. So what, what our mission is, we clearly understand uh, what the customers are looking for, their issues and come up with um, we design, develop uh, a validated uh, turnkey solution. We provide on a timely fashion on budget um, and with the support of our valued contract manufacturing and research partners. And I would say most of our uh, projects, uh, the commercial as well as the R&D, 
have something to do with uh, either using uh, additive AM or the old term I use it quite frequently is rapid prototyping if it's a uh, low volume. Uh, 3D scanning or ICME or virtual simulation and modeling techniques. Um, as I said, you know that uh, we, we are not only involved with uh, metal casting, but we do provide similar services for plastic elastomer FRP. Um, and you know, we lately we see a lot of movement towards uh, redesign or conversion. Uh, into casting uh, related activities for the better economics and design optimization and you know we have a host of uh, components we have worked on I'll be able to share some of them today um, just to give you a flavor and we do occasionally get into if we are asked to redesign we deep dive and do failure analysis and understand the root cause and then Try to fix it and these are some of the tools uh, which I'm sure most of you are uh, quite familiar and maybe hands-on using it uh, varieties of CAD FEA CFD uh, this is how I started the company to provide as a service using casting process simulation in uh, 93 uh, I call it the, the days where uh, um, this particular segment metal casting industry we didn't have uh, 3D, uh, very limited 3D. Uh, everything was done in 2D and drawings, and uh, these tools were new. So I think we uh, demonstrated to a lot of those folks the value in using these tools. And some of those folks have, including large companies, have incorporated those as in house, but using us as kind of try out or see the value. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll jump into, you know, share a little bit of uh, our internal process for light weighting. Um, and, and before I jump in, um, for some of you not quite familiar with metal casting, I always like to use this slide for most of my presentations. You know, casting is is a process where you know you have molten metal uh, well above the liquidus is poured into a mold and then it goes through solidification depending upon the cooling rate and after it's solidified to certain temperature it's uh, extracted out or ejected out of the mold and and it's it has its uh, strength uh, when you try to design and and make complex uh, shaped configurations which are rather impossible or uneconomical to do it by any other means um, since uh, it does involve uh, handling liquid metal uh, it, it uh, you have to understand the physics behind you know the fluid flow uh, and in conjunction with that the heat transfer and the whole you know effect of gravity and surface tension viscosity and and you know multi-phase flow where you have suspended uh, you know inclusions or sand and how they end up um, you know, appearing on your casting so you know you you, you need to understand and and these are all driven by physics and I think we, we have uh, solved most of these issues uh, numerically solving them since we understand the physics and also uh, since this is casting you need to also be aware of uh, there are metallurgical aspects that uh, for example certain alloys um, you know the strength uh, and the toughness and the ductility do change uh, with respect to the cooling rate and and the purity or the section thickness and and so we use quite heavily icme uh, towards casting design and manufacturing uh, process and i'll cover that so in our process uh, you know we before we jump into uh, we you know any 
new product development, uh, we look at, since we have the expertise and understanding of other uh, materials and manufacturing processes, we typically do a value engineering, uh, VE, and, and down select to make sure that that particular product or configuration truly belongs to uh, metal casting. Um, you know, if somebody comes to me and say, hey, I, you know, need a flat plate and uh, very simple geometry, I would say, hey, you know, th that doesn't belong here. And, and truly, my experience is those are the most painful uh, shapes to make by casting, the most simple shapes. Um, so we, we start off with the value engineering and then we have developed a couple of tools casting alloy and process selector. This is at a conceptual stage that, uh, you know, depending upon your requirement, uh, we down select uh, the process and the alloy um, that, you know, that that particular uh, component uh, fits in. And then you dip dive into detailed design and another tool, CATS, casting alloy, a data selector, which actually gives you a lot of engineering and ICME related uh, database to work with for your validations. And then we go through the whole process. So we look at design engineering, obviously keep attention to the customer requirements, and then also pay attention simultaneously to come up with a cost effective solution. So we, we look at the cost reductions and time savings. And we work in a collaborative environment. We firmly believe that uh, OEMs, uh, they really uh, have their core competency is on understanding, you know, their product applications, uh, the different environments and failure modes that they understand much better. So we interact uh, and try to pick on them to establish um, the go no go or acceptance criteria and you know as as we all believe that no matter how much simulation we do um, all the simulations have some sort of uh, assumption or 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 uh, limitation that uh, you cannot account for all the possible scenarios so we invariably go through um, uh, you know recommend prototyping and functional testing and evaluation and lessons learned and incorporate and refine into your final design before releasing it into the production. So the key elements for uh, successful advanced product development uh, are, you know, clearly understanding the requirements and specs, design, value engineering, detail engineering, including CAE, uh, functional prototyping, test and evaluation, and also understand the production environment uh, uh, in the manufacturing uh, world and, and overall managing um, to keep all the ducks in a row uh, for the timely execution. And, and I am a firm believer, you know, um, this is something we focus very heavily on, on getting accurate data inputs uh, for any of the virtual simulations. Um, so we get uh, more uh, accurate outputs and intelligent designs. Uh, so validate, integrate, and then uh, rather than going through, I know there is some debate, uh, some companies have a philosophy, you know, they, they go um, uh, more like a sequential step, uh, where they design, test, and then come back and do optimization, um, uh, maybe because of the time crunch. But what we do at PDA, we do in parallel the optimization uh, along with the new product development. So, you know, you 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 get at the end uh, an optimized uh, solution. Um, these are some of, uh, so one thing we do uh, as a deliverable, so we get inputs from customer, and, and this applies to any uh, design optimization for metal casting or any other process. You know, you understand the requirements, acceptance criteria, 
and go through the structural engineering validation casting uh, design which includes risering grading and foundry engineering and and go through the optimization um, including mimicking the service performance and then the output would be you know what we typically deliver are the 3d models the drawings uh, production method uh, in case of tooling uh, conventional uh, processes tooling design quality requirement and you know city queues the critical to quality uh, factors yeah, etc and and one of the key aspect uh, that we do very well is conduct a design failure mode effects analysis uh, it's a team approach and that is where we we'll, we look at um, the service loads for the fatigue um, a potential fatigue failure mode or an overload uh, situations uh, to make sure the design is robust and 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 in parallel we do the process uh, failure modes and effects analysis understanding you know the casting manufacturing process capabilities and and the process parameters variability and simulate against the worst case scenario uh, to make sure the design is going to be manufacturable. Um, and this is very key, especially when we get into the thin wall uh, configurations, thin wall castings. So where are the opportunities with the thin wall castings? So obviously, you know, if you are at a conceptual stage and you are developing uh, new products, uh, I think uh, this provides uh, a, a, a much greater uh, impact uh, to your overall design optimization uh, goal uh, since uh, you know you have designed freedom with feature placement you know like using a, a solid wall uh, feature versus uh, you know ripped structure which provide the same stiffness or even better stiffness uh, um, so you know new product development um, and and i'll i'll cover a couple of slides on knowledge uh, driven and experience driven uh, design development versus there are quite a few new tools out which uh, you know, like auto solvers or generative design topology optimizations that they do automatically, iteratively, and 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 I have a few comments on that, uh, and I'll cover that. The other set of opportunities are, uh, you know, you have a legacy part or a current part, and 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 suddenly, you know, you are asked to uh, drop some weight. Uh, uh, and optimize for overall performance of the system or sub assembly so we call it uh, redesign or in some cases uh, they don't even have the technical data package and that legacy part is you know physically available a uh, hardware no cad uh, database uh, that would fall into reverse engineering but the overall goal is to you know optimize an existing uh, or a prior uh, product um, Within that, uh, either you are refining existing cast or fabricated design to thin wall casting configuration, uh, the use of ICME approach, and the newer lightweight high strength alloys that you want to replace, uh, and that triggers the need for redesigning um, to, to shave some weight off without impacting the performance or even pushing the limit and and uh, getting a uh, you know more more out of the current design uh, more performance out of the current design so as i said uh, you know uh, all these neat tools uh, generative designs uh, you know auto top topology optimizations uh, if you just rely solely on them without any interaction uh, you will get uh, non-manufacturable or non-castable designs and, and and here are the examples and maybe this is okay 
you know, what I see is the additive manufacturing uh, of the metal parts uh, that they can tackle um, uh, this kind of uneven wall thickness and they don't have to be concerned with how I'm going to fill this cavity with the liquid metal type. Um, but uh, I, I, my personal opinion is that, you know, casting manufacturability based on experience and rules, uh, they give you much better shot at design optimization and, 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 and the use of uh, virtual simulation is also very key. Uh, the figure on the right, actually, I'll, I'll go in detail, but um, just to uh, 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 complement my comment, uh, this is actually a diff carrier that uh, we had asked uh, a university student to use um, automatic uh, topology optimization. And, and this is what uh, that student came up with. And, and I'm like, you know, looks pretty cool on paper yeah you can reduce 50 percent of the weight basically what it does is it drops the nodes of uh, wherever you have no stress or zero stress conditions and and i started asking i'm like how are you going to get this and how are you going to feed it and you know i mean this is not manufacturable at all so then we took over and and used our uh, approach and yielded the result, uh, which I will come back in a minute. So as of now, uh, the technology enablers available uh, are the ICME tools, uh, quite matured. I think the tools are available where I see are the gaps in um, uh, not having uh, the database. Uh, for example, you know, thermomechanical and thermophysical properties, uh, elevated temperature data, but the, the tools are available, and I'll, I'll quickly go through. Uh, I'm very fascinated and uh, uh, about uh, the toolingless uh, 3D printed sand uh, process, which really is uh, uh, kind of... Uh, uh, I would say uh, low, lower hanging fruit type opportunity uh, that you can easily shave off uh, the weight uh, of an existing design, uh, which is made with the traditional sand casting process. And, and I'll cover, go a little bit deeper on that. And then there are uh, newer uh, or modified alloys with enhanced properties. The, the one uh, we have developed out of the lift project and it's patented is a high silicon ductile iron uh, with a much higher uh, strength uh, and ductility combination that we ended up using on, uh, on one of our projects for demonstrating uh, uh, the, all the way uh, through prototyping and production, semi-production. And then another uh, LIP 380 uh, coming out of a thin wall uh, LIP project, uh, high pressure die casting aluminum, which uh, again has excellent strength and ductility uh, with uh, good fatigue data. So, uh, I, I would comment on some alloys, for example, you know, aluminum silicon based, uh, that thinner walls actually have better mechanical properties than the relatively thicker walls. And, and, and what I'm saying is, for example, you make 356, uh, 38 wall, and the properties you get are going to be much better than than half inch or one inch uh, section thickness. So, so you know, a lot of current designs um, which were probably driven um, by uh, the manufacturability aspect have thicker walls, uh, but if you apply any of these uh, either additive or ICME tools, I think you can 
definitely reduce the wall thickness and and you will get an overall improvement uh, also um, except the directionally solidified alloys uh, the drafting is not that useful um, so you know I'll, I'll come to that why i'm saying that um, what is icme i'm sure most of you are aware of um, it's an integrated computational materials engineering and it, it's basically an integration of materials uh, information uh, the materials information with regards to you know like grain size relationship to you know mechanical properties microstructure distribution to property relationship um, but those are captured in computational tools numerically and and they tie to the engineering product performance analysis and and manufacturing process simulation like casting flow analysis um, as 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 i went through earlier the casting um, since it goes through a uh, cooling uh, solidification and cooling um, uh, you would see a different uh, grain size or different microstructure in the same casting shape as a function of section thickness uh, or you know how much heat is being retained or extracted the cooling rate and th therefore it is very important to to conduct a, a detailed comprehensive um, casting process simulation um, and and the idea there is to uh, see what you would expect uh, in terms of properties uh, and match that to your FEA based simulation and see in in your high um, the critical area high stress areas have adequate uh, strength you know when, when we do FEA even now uh, we assume the entire casting will have the same modulus and and you do a number crunching and based on that you come up with an allowable stress but in reality if you focus on just the critical area and actually use the predicted modulus which we can do uh, with most of the alloys especially with the iron alloys and and in zone them then you have a better shot at uh, optimizing further the the section thickness and the component weight and and lift has uh, an excellent um, um, you know icme task team we are part of it and also my mission is to uh, i get engaged with a lot of contract research in in generating engineering additional engineering data that is going to be useful to us uh, the icme community um, additive, I'm sure most of you know, uh, and, and here what I'm referring to is the printed sand uh, mold or core and, and the printed wax like patterns for investment. And since this approach, you don't have a tooling, clearly the easiest thing you can do is, you know, you can have no draft or zero draft um, added to your features which will automatic automatically will lead to the lower weight um, you can position the features um, where you were constrained with the conventional sand casting and that will yield to you know uh, weight uh, minimization um, you can do uh, looking at the sub assembly and incorporate some of the features which you could not make as part of the casting with the tooling uh, conventional process with the additive you know you have the design freedom and you can consolidate some of those features and eliminate the bolted joints or the welded joints and make that as part of the casting um, and and another thing is 
with this process, um, you get much tighter dimensional tolerances. For example, if you have you know eight to ten cores and you're trying to consolidate um, into one or two, now you eliminated all the core print related clearances and and that will tighten up your um, uh, tolerances and therefore now you can come back close to your design uh, desired wall thickness. So uh, the opportunities are weldment to casting conversion. You know, considering uh, uh, stealing some of the bel uh, welded bolted joints into the casting as a one piece, uh, maybe combined functionality into one piece, eliminating the interfaces and assembling operation part consolidation and taking advantage of the precision sand casting process and core consolidation which will give you much tighter tolerances to go a little bit deeper on that point if you look at the iso 86 uh, 8062 which is typically used for dimensional tolerances for sand casting you know you, you would be somewhere the traditional with the tooling you would be somewhere in this zone 8 to grade 8 to 14 for your tolerance just to demonstrate you know if I have a casting with a three millimeter wall that my FEA tells me if I look up into this table and if I go with the conventional sand casting which fits into this grade 12 now you would have to make even though your design needs three millimeter but now you have to make it 7.2 millimeter thickness because of the variability in the process and and a lot of times because of that you have thicker walls then your design optimized um, section thickness required well if you go with the additive route um, you know uh, which would be somewhere in this uh, zone three to four to five and I just pick an example you know say four grade four now you need to just add only 0.26 millimeter. Now imagine, you know, compared to 7.2 to 3.26, you basically, you know, brought it to less than half. So this is uh, some of the quick, uh, low hanging fruit type, uh, quick hits that you can get by just this simple conversion uh, from tooling conventional casting to the additive and and get the thin wall um, you know design and get the optimization here are some of the examples we have created for uh, quite a few oems our oem customers to 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 drive the point away you know this was a ductile iron about 2800 pound uh, overall size and and as you can see you know we incorporated a lot of features like this uh, you know which used to be a, a, a welded on feature and even some of the veins uh, which are you know welded on and and i said hey you know we can make the whole thing as a one piece casting and and uh, with the core consolidation and get uh, high dimensional accuracy so this is an example another one is on a structural steel casting and and um, same thing, you know, uh, another one, I just came up with that idea, offered that as a solution to one of my customers. I'm like, hey, you know, for the racing, you know, uh, aluminum V engine, uh, the block, I'm like, why can't you combine, you know, exhaust manifold uh, as part of the, the engine and you eliminate the whole gasketing and the interface. And so now it's doable with, uh, if you go with the 3D printed sand route. So I'll quickly go through uh, the case studies. This is the one which came out of the lift uh, thin wall iron. Uh, we got 40% weight reduction. Uh, and, uh, you know, we optimized, again, this is using uh, a combination of solidification simulation, our experience, and, and um, came up with a, a design fully validated, develop the rigging, um, extensively use ICME, and, and did the first article, uh, made few uh, PPAP, 
got the machine. This is, you see a scan uh, to check the dimensional uh, variability to the nominal CAD on the right uh, corner. Uh, left is the FEA and the right is the process simulation. The, you know, we considered all different boundary conditions, uh, forward and reverse, so dip carrier um, rotations and uh, use ICMA to predict the microstructure to the porosity and to the mechanical properties. Um, as you can see, you know, in the same casting, you are seeing a different modulus um, uh, and different elongation. So the key is you look at from your FEA and make sure the high stress areas uh, are covered. Um, and this is the final uh, design, fully machined, that we were able to drop the weight uh, 40%. Uh, another one is uh, uh, on thin wall aluminum that uh, we used uh, ICME approach to get a better uh, predictions of the properties and microstructure for thin wall components. Uh, and the thin wall here are two millimeter three millimeter and five millimeter test bar mold um, that, uh, you know, these are the actual conditions. We simulated um, the local cooling rates and uh, dendritic arm spacing and train size and related that to the mechanical properties, uh, predictive models, uh, the work done by the University of Michigan, uh, Professor John Allison's group and we compared uh, the x-ray results to the predicted shrinkage and we got a very good correlation um, on this particular program then we tackled and scaled up uh, this is a 1.2 meter long approximately a side impact beam and the wall thickness is about three millimeter um, and this we made with a super vac high pressure uh, die casting this particular program project was led by Boeing. Uh, we provided ICME support along with uh, University of Michigan and Ohio State uh, team. Uh, we predicted hot air and porosity, which was validated uh, by conducting an X-ray. And, and uh, we got a pretty good uh, correlation to our predictions to um, what we found. Um, so we, you know, this is what we do uh, very well, and, and this is important for thin wall, is to do an accurate prediction of the porosity or, or tears, and then apply the fatigue uh, fracture mechanics, uh, estimate the critical flow tolerance for your design for the service load, and from there, you come up with an acceptance criteria that you can impose upon by zoning the casting and communicating to your casting vendors. I think if we do that, as opposed to grossly saying, hey, I want the entire casting you know, uh, to level or grade B or C or level one or two, uh, you may be, you know, uh, kind of chasing the rainbow type and 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 spending a lot of money uh, unnecessarily. Uh, so by just right specifying, um, I think you you get uh, good results. So I'll quickly zip through. I know I'm coming to an end, but this was a thin wall aluminum castings that we were involved uh, on a collective protection uh, for chem bio defense. On a DOD project uh, that we supported and did all kind of validations, natural frequency model analysis, shock and vibe, rail impact, and and develop the acceptance criteria based on fracture mechanics and critical flow tolerance. This is for the Navy um, collective protection system for the legacy shipboard, uh, where uh, there are a bunch of aluminum castings involved and we validated those against the mill uh, 901 shock modeling um, and uh, the vibration per uh, mill 167 um, and then did the castability study. Um, this one is, uh, uh, you know, I would 
put into a thin wall because the wall thickness is where about three eight to half inch but the overall casting was about five feet by five feet envelope size uh, for ag's cruiser this is i don't know if you can see it but this is the AG, ag's cruiser and the radar antenna uh, uh, on which the dish gets mounted that used to be a steel weldment and we converted into a one-piece casting and it's in production for several years uh, successfully uh, another one is on the transmission case the here i would say takeaway is i mean this was the pre-additive era but if we have to redo it we would have achieved uh, much better results in a shorter time frame by consolidating if you can see here 34 cores i think we could have dropped those into maybe two or three and and eliminate all the variability with their uh, core fixturing and gluing and putting them in 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 place uh, together uh, but again uh, this was a while ago we were able to execute in seven weeks thanks to the process simulation and uh, the rapid tooling approach a uh, few on the ductile iron hub we have done quite a bit of work uh, produced thin wall uh, these are literally three to three and a half millimeter wall thickness uh, castings that uh, we created uh, have some more examples on you know icme which uh, helped us predict uh, residual stresses distortion um, and modifying your design or process parameter to make sure um, you know you are able to achieve uh, the the results you are looking for so some on the titanium copper alloys a large oil pan um, uh, this is something uh, we did it a while ago for the u.s navy uh, these are 500 and 2000 pound bunker buster we converted those from steel to ductile iron specialized ductile iron castings successfully used this is for gd um, sub rack aluminum casting thin wall and this is thin wall uh, stainless that we made a whole bunch of components for a rail car through design validation testing and and the last one is a composite uh, uh, pilot housing for mark 5 boat uh, for socom that uh, we executed through so uh, you know basically we 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 collaborate uh, and even work with uh, very large oems as well as small companies and and uh, i thought we'll just share our process and and how we tackle uh, getting thin wall and light weighting uh, metal casting um, so i would say in a wrap up uh, thin wall casting technology is a viable solution for light weighting using current state-of-the-art technologies especially icme additive uh, printed sand and some of the newer alloys uh, just designed for making thin wall uh, castings in iron and aluminum and and we do believe that knowledge and experience driven designs would yield uh, much more manufacturable solutions than uh, some of the automated uh, design tools uh, which i feel are more suited for uh, 3D printed metal. So with that, Joe, I would uh, uh, take a pause, and uh, I know we have a few minutes. Uh, if you want to, if you have some questions, I know I spilled over a little bit. Oh no, thank you very much. That was a, a great presentation. Uh, as you uh, can tell, um, PDA is certainly an organization you want to uh, reach out to if um, if you have some 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 light weighting uh, needs, uh, particularly on the on the metal side. I know. Um, as I mentioned, this uh, this webinar is going to be is being recorded and will be posted on the Lyft website. If there are folks that are interested in talking with uh, Jaten further about uh, these slides or access to them or or anything like that, I would suggest you reach out to him with the information you have on the screen there. Uh, a couple questions did come in. I know I want to be um, respectful of everyone's time and be done here uh, by the top of the hour, but there were a couple questions. Uh, Jatan, you, you mentioned earlier back in the presentation about how you would hand it off um, to a student, a university student, uh, to run some software. I think it might have been on the on the on the diff case to right. uh, 
come back, but it was unmanufacturable. Are there software packages that can combine uh, that combine generative design with known casting requirements so that the software generates something that is capable? Or is uh, capable? As of now, nothing commercially available. We are actually in a process of developing the one through America Mix project, uh, just uh, attempting to combine some handbook design rules uh, and and apply the topology optimization, but uh, nothing off the shelf available. And and that is where I said, you know, that maybe you can use those, but always go back, think how you can manufacture and mm -hmm. and refine those uh, kind of a hybrid approach, but not a magic tool where you click the button and it will generate uh, automotive, you know. Uh, uh, optimized design not yet got it got it thank you um one more have you had have you had projects where using the generative design approach added value um in addition to cast ballot uh, ca castability uh this person's concern um is w with the approach is that the generative design would not generate support material for unexpected loads that casting might see in service leading to a casting that's sus susceptible to failure yeah, I, I I I fully agree the concerns, uh, and that is why I am saying uh, uh, maybe get a, a baseline design, run through an FEA, and then uh, look uh, the generative design output, and maybe you will learn from it. But uh, and then you have to manually apply. There is no automatic tool. For the same reason, because you know, you, when you do FEA, you want to consider all the load cases, and all it takes is one load case uh, that you did not use in the generative design may come and bite you because that will lead to the failure. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Well, we are uh, quickly approaching uh, the top of the hour. I want to thank everyone for for joining in today. We are here. Uh, on the third Thursday of each month uh, with a presentation from a smaller, medium-sized manufacturer that is really it making inroads and in innovation in the lightweight metal space. So hopefully you you uh, witnessed that today, uh, hearing from Jaten. If you, again, if you'd like to follow up with him uh, directly, please do so using the information you have on your screen. Um, uh, in the meantime, check back for our June uh, presentation. Again, third Thursday of the month at noon Eastern time. and. Thank you so much for joining. We'll see you next month. Thank you all.